Do you think the perfect is the enemy of the good in hardware and software engineering? It's so like we were talking about JavaScript a little bit and the messiness of the 10 day building process. Yeah, it's, it's you know, creative tension, right? Hmm. So creative tension is you have two different ideas that you can't do both, right? right. And, the, and But the fact that you wanna do both causes you to go try to solve that problem. That's the creative part. So if you're building computers, like some people say, we have the schedule and anything that doesn't fit in the schedule, we can't do, right? And so they, they throw out the perfect because they have a schedule. I hate that. <laughs> right? Then there's other people to say, we need to get this perfectly right. And no matter what, you know, more people, more money, right? And there's a really clear idea about what you want. And some people are really good at articulating it, right? So let's call that the perfect, yeah. Yeah. All right, but that's also terrible because they never ship anything. They never hit any goals. So now you have the now you have your framework. Yes, you can't throw out stuff because you can't get it done today. Because maybe you get it done tomorrow or the next project, right? You can't. So you have to. I work with a guy that I really like working with, but he overfilters his ideas. Overfilters. He'd start thinking about something, and as soon as he figured out what was wrong with it, he'd throw it out. And then I start thinking about it, and I, you know, you come up with an idea, and then you find out what's wrong with it, and then you leave, give it a little time to set because sometimes you know you figure out how to tweak it, or maybe that idea helps some other idea. So idea generation is really funny. So you have to give your ideas space, like spaciousness of mind is key, but you also have to execute programs and get shit done. And then it turns out computer engineering is fun because it takes you know hundred people to build a computer. 200 to 300 whatever the number is and people are so variable about you know temperament and you know skill sets and stuff that in a, in a big organization you find the the people who love the perfect ideas and the people that want to get stuff done yesterday and people like that to, to come up with ideas and people like to let's say shoot down ideas and it takes the whole it takes a large group of people some are good at generating ideas <clears throat> some are good at filtering ideas and then they'll all the, in that uh, giant mess, you're somehow, I guess the goal is for that giant mess of people to uh, find the perfect path through the, yeah. the tension, the creative tension. But like, how do you know when, you said there's some people good at articulating what perfect looks like, what a good design is. Like mm -hmm. if you're sitting in a, in a room and uh, you have a set of ideas about like how to design uh, a better processor, how do you know this is this is something special here. This is a good idea. Let's try this. So have you ever brainstormed idea with a couple of people that were really smart? And you kind of go into it and you, you you don't quite understand it and you're working on it. And then you start, you know, talking about it, putting it on the whiteboard. Maybe it takes days or weeks. And then your brain starts to kind of synchronize. It's really weird. <laughs> with and the, like you start to see what each other is thinking. And, yeah. and it starts to work. Like you can see it work. Like my talent in computer design is I can, I can see how computers work in my head like really well. And I know other people can do that too. And when you're working with people that can do that, like it, it is kind of a, an amazing experience. And then and every once in a while you, you get to that place and then you find the flaw, in it, which is kind of funny because you, you, can, you can fool yourself. In, but the two of you kind of drifted along yeah, yeah. Uh, into a direction to, that was useless. <laughs> yeah, that happens too. Like you have to, because you know the it, well, the nice thing about computer design is always reduction to practice. Like you come up yeah. with your good ideas, and I know some architects who really love ideas, and then they work on them and they put it on the shelf. They go work on the next idea and put it on the shelf. They never reduce it to practice, so they find out what's good and bad. Because almost every time I've done something really new. By the time it's done, like the good parts are good, but I know all the flaws. Like, yeah, would you say your career, just your own experience, is your career defined by mostly by flaws or by successes? Like, no, if again, there's great tension between those. If you haven't tried hard, yeah, right, and done something new, right, then you're you're not going to be facing the challenges when you build it. Then you find out all the problems with it, and but when you look back, do you see problems? Or? Okay. Oh, when I look back, um, what do you? Remember? I think earlier in my career, yeah, like EV5 was the second alpha chip. 
uh, I was so embarrassed about the mistakes I could barely talk about it. And it was in the Guinness Book of World Records and it was the fastest processor on the planet. Yeah. So it was, and at some point I realized that was really a bad mental framework to deal with, like doing something new. We did a bunch of new things and some worked out great and some were bad. And we learned a lot from it. And then the next one, we learned a lot. That also, you know, EV6 also had some really cool things in it. I think the proportion of good stuff went up, but it had a couple of fatal flaws in it that were painful. And then, uh, yeah. You, you, you learned to channel the pain into like pride. Not pride really, you know, just uh, realization about how the world works okay. or how, how that kind of idea set works. Life is suffering, that's the reality. What? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> Well, I know the Buddha said that, and a couple <laughs> other people are, are stuck on it. No, it's, you know, there's this kind of weird combination of good and bad, and, you know, light and darkness that you have to tolerate and, you know, deal with. Yeah, there's definitely lots of suffering in the world. Depends on the perspective. It seems like there's way more darkness, but uh, that makes the light part really nice. <laughs>